गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात्ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम it is easier to practice anything at a gross level because it is so obvious the surroundings of our house should be clean anybody can appreciate that the uh contents of our house should be clean yes the clothes should be clean yes no doubt but when we go subtler and subtler in our personality and then we are told that our mind is also required to be clean it is not that we don't want but we don't understand what do we mean by clean mind we all have a clear understanding that there is no better clean mind in this world than that of mind we have no doubt about it so how to know that our mind is clean and pure this is what the teachers told us when we are able to control the mind then it is a clean mind unclean mind is not under control how do we say that uh, our child is good or bad when the child listens to us then is a good child isn't it if he doesn't listen to us then what can you do helpless in the same manner a good mind a clean mind is the mind which is under our control so yesterday the teacher told us sarvad dwarani sayamya manaha rudi nirudhya cha we close all the gates of extrovertedness and the mind is brought back to the heart and there after all the energy that we have the prana shakti the kriya shakti that is as if sucked up together the best example that can i think of is like the children bring out the bubble gum and then they suck the bubble gum inside in the same manner when the energy the shakti is as if expanding the expansion of this energy or the shakti starts expressing at muladhar in the form of body identification at swadhisthan in the form of the desireness at the manipur in the form of imaginary sorties in the fantasy worlds and then at the level of the anatha chakra the sins of the individuality so when it is said that the whole prana shakti is withdrawn means what body identification is withdrawn desires are no more shackles there is no imaginary imaginary fantasy going into the imaginary creation of the fairy tale worlds and there is no strong individuality with this process we have come to the vishuddha chakra where there is no impurity of i see and when this has happened thereafter murdhya dhayatman ha pranam astitah yoga dharanam now we have thus come up to this vishuddha chakra now after that even there is a possibility that we may slip down again to the relative world so according to the yoga shastra vishuddha chakra is 
a point where from we can either uh, grow into the totality by the total loss of individuality or we can again come down to the individuality and start living the relative life. It is just border case. So when the seeker has thus brought the prana shakti at the guru or madhe, the agya chakra, and then from there to the sahasra, the crown, and after having done this up to here, murdhya dhayatmanaha pranam astitaha yoga dharana. Thereafter, what is to be done? Now we are ready to take off. You know, when the last instruction is given, the crew may take their seats now. So now the crew has to take the seats. And the plane is on the runway. And when the plane is on the runway, it doesn't start running. Uh, no, it goes with a tremendous speed, boom, and the speed is caught in no time. And when this uh, aeroplane so heavy assembly of metal and matter, when it goes with tremendous speed, it becomes light. And when it becomes light, it becomes air worthy. And then it can take off in the same manner. When we are totally withdrawn from the whole world and also collected all our total energy and we have come to the sasra, now it is ready to take off. That is the time. That time what is to be done? Munna ki ma. I told you that after I die, you get married. What have you decided? First you die now. <laughs> so at that time, again we come back to the same worldly thoughts. And therefore, the technique given is Omitte Kaksharam Brahma Vyaharan Mamanusparan. Now, two things are to be done. Om iti eka aksharam Brahma Vyaharan. Vyaharan means chanting. Then, at that moment, on the seat of meditation, then start. This will not allow any other thoughts to be born. That is why when we chant the Lord's name, why we don't succeed is this reason. That Ram becomes Lam because there are no teeth. I don't know where is my danger. So Lam 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 Lam. Do you know the love in the old age means what? Honey, yes, darling. Will you please brush my teeth? Where are they? They are in the second floor. <laughs> there was one oldie. He was given some blood to by the oldie wife. And it fell from his hand and went below the cot. So this old man got down and started searching. The old lady says, what are you doing? No, no, my Latu has fallen down. Okay, take next one. Don't start playing at this age. 
Why you want that laddu only? No, I want that only. But why? Because my teeth has gone all over. <laughs> so, the first thing to be achieved is a mechanical suspension of thought formation. And that is attained when any word is chanted for a long time. Now see, watch your mind when you are listening. Ram, 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 Ram. So with every Ram, there was a kind of a spark of consciousness. Again I say, see, it exactly it happens like this. Ram, 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 Ram. More the number of breaches, more are the thought formations. So frequency of thought is directly proportionate to the words uttered. Now the another one. Now see the difference when we want to focus the last moment of our life. No worldly thought should come. And therefore, this chanting Om for a long period, with a long length, the uh, shoots of thoughts are pruned. Om. Now that mind, which is now no more getting involved into any thought process, there is a problem. Problem is everywhere. What is the problem? We have been living with the thought-free mind means, when there are no thoughts, go to sleep. And that is why many people, when they sit for meditation, they have Sound meditation. And you must have seen, you know, those who snore, they are never in a hurry. Have you ever heard snoring? No. Like a dirgh onkar. And those who are awake, they are disgusted. Stop this. What do I do? I am not doing it purposely. It happens. This is nature. Now why this happens? Because we have trained our mind only for this. Whenever there are no thoughts, go to sleep. To protect these slip into the sleep, the teacher tells another word. Om iti ekaksharam brahma vyaharan maam anusmaran. Now, not only chant Om, but now start contemplating on that Om. Where from the Om began? Where it is existing? And when the last makar is chanted, Om. Where does it go back? Anusmara. This is the most important word in this particular chapter. Anusmara. When you are chanting, how, who, where from this Om begins? The beginning of the sound and the end of the sound is in the same point and that is the point to be caught. 
Now do this when you go home. Don't do now. You will not listen. Who told you otherwise we are listening? <laughs> so, when we practice this again and again, you know the immediate result is our whole personality becomes calm and quiet. Leave God aside, leave death aside. The immediate impact in our life will be the stress and tensions and the worries, everything will disappear. The other day, one Amma came and spoke to me about some uh, thing and the very moment phone came. And the phone was, Swamiji, I am having terrible tension. What should I do? Pass on to me and switch off the phone. And I put down the phone. Then that lady told me, Swamiji, I don't know these days, anybody is telling that I am having tension and stress. For example, she said, Swamiji, I have got a molkar in. You know, the one who washes the utensils and all that. The other day she came and uh, I told her, I said, look here, you are not washing properly. She straight away told, look here, I am already having tension. She said, Ram, now can you imagine a servant comes and tells you that he has a tension and stress. Sir, you don't trouble me now, okay? So, when we are focusing attention on this principle or the process, oh, so two things are going on simultaneously. You are chanting, oh, and your attention is, where from the Om began, where it existed, and where it goes back. Try to catch it. Oh, it's here. It is now. And slowly, slowly, when you become intensely one with that point, you disappear. See, when we disappear, all the worries of the world are solved. Because we only are the biggest problem to the whole world. This is how, at the time of departure, Omitte Kaksharam Brahma Vyaharan Mamanusvaran. Now you know what has happened? By this technique, the mind is now free from any impressions. There are zero impressions now. There is no impression of any kind on the mind. Because there are zero impressions, no impressions on the mind, as a result, there is no Jiva Bhava. And because <coughs> there is no Jiva Bhava, there is no possibility of our mind taking another form and for that another form, another body. That is gone. See? Whatever may be the holiest of the rivers, Alaknanda begins, Saraswati Amma comes and merges in Alaknanda. Saraswati Gaya. Then Alaknanda comes and at uh, Rudraprayag, Mandakini comes. Both of them meet together, Mandakini Gaya. Nama, Rupa, name and form disappear. Only Alaknanda. Then further at Devaprayag, from this side Alaknanda. Now, in this Alaknanda's womb, there are dozens of rivers contained. All other names and forms are Deleted, only one name is kept. Be very attentive. Then at Deva Prayag, Bhagirathi comes from Gangotri, and Arakananda comes from Badrinath, and both of them leave their names and forms, and Ganges are born. Gangaji does not start from Gangotri, Gangaji starts from the Deva Prayag. 
So from there the Gandhis begins. Now in the womb of the Gandhis, so many different names and forms are contained. And therefore the Gandhis become holy river. The one who includes everything he is holier than the one who excludes everything. And she goes, consumes Yamanaji, still goes ahead, and at Bengal, Ganga Sagar. Now, Ganga Sagar, Ganga is a feminine name, Sagar is a masculine name. See? And ultimately, all the names and forms dissolved, and after the river merges in the ocean, again from the same river, another river doesn't come out. Thereafter, the river journey is complete in the same manner. When the mind is totally still, there are no thoughts, one. Second, there are no impressions. If you want to get an example, he is like a lungi which he has, you know, squeezed to dry and kept it on the tap and conveniently forgotten. And next day morning, when you want to put on, the whole lungi is like this. Then what do we do? We do the ironing. So when ironing is done, what is removed? Nothing is removed. But if nothing is removed, then why did you do the ironing? That is what is called the irony. You remove nothing and yet you do the irony. So those wrinkles are nothing but the lungi and the wrinkles are not abnormalities. It is a part and it is actually the lungi alone in the same manner. The consciousness with the wrinkles of impression is the mind. And when, by the ironing of this meditation, our Swami used to use the word, in the heat of meditation, all the differences are ironed out. And then, such a mind has no more to be reborn again. See, that is why Bhagavan says, Yaha prayati tejan dehan. He who has left the body in this particular process. Yaha prajati tajan deham sayati paramam gatim. He alone attains the absolute abode. So there are relative abodes also. Yes, there are relative abodes. So now it is a choice given to us. When you are leaving this body, one choice is, my doggy, my doggy, I don't know what will happen to my dog after I die. Dog, what will I do for without you there? And at the time of dying, dog, 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 dog. That thought was dog. Next life, born as a dog. Yam yam vabi smaran bhavam te dhyante kale varan. We were told day for study. The second option is, we go to the divine kingdom of the gods. So, we go to Saket, we go to Vaikuntha, we go to Shiva Lok, we go to Surya Lok, you know. The other day somebody asked me, Swami, this, what is this Surya Yoga? I said, I Surya Yoga, I do not know. I know Sushupti Yoga, the best one. You go to the Surya Yoga, what will you do there? You don't require any hot water to take bath. Surya Yoga. And all these things are only the relative existence. It is not absolute. It is something like, you know, we go for a vacation or a trip. 
family, we are going to uh, Ladakh. Oh, very good. What is the next question we ask? When are you coming back? First question. That means it is certain wherever you go, you are going to come back. That is why when we dissolve in our own being, Brother Nikko Ganesha says, Na tasya prana utkramanti. The one who dissolves his mind in the consciousness, he is no more dying as an individual. And because he is no more dying as an individual, for him there is neither hell nor heaven, neither sin nor merit, neither going this way or going that way. See? Therefore, Bhagwan is very clearly telling this option. Now decide whether we want to go to the lower rooms or we want to go for a vacation and come back to again the same Bombay. You know why Bombay people go for vacation maximum? The other day, when I went to Kailash and uh, the guide was talking to me. Swamiji, where from you are? I said, I am from Bombay. He immediately stopped. He said, please tell me, the people in Bombay, they don't have any other job. I said, why, what happened? He said, 75% of the visitors to Kailash are from Bombay. Now see, we want to go there with a very clear idea to come back to Bombay. When again sweat and tired, and again, I think next time you'll go to Kulu Manali. Go to Kulu Manali, all comments, Are, uh, Dhiru bhai? <laughs> How come you are here? Dhiru bhai just read there. So, Kulu Manali, Shimla, anywhere you go, the same Bombay is recreated there. See how important it is. In the same manner, these temporary abodes of going to this loka, that loka, this is not the permanent solution. It is something like a painkiller. In the morning class, Bhagwan uh, Sri Krishna told Uddhavji that when our disease is not properly diagnosed and the root cause is not removed, then what the allopaths do? They give you the painkiller. Why? Because they can't kill you. <laughs> so slowly, slowly, they will ultimately finish you. So, again, as long as the painkiller is operating, there is no pain. But the moment that is detoxified and excreted from your system, again the pain begins because the cause is not removed. And therefore, Unless we are observing this, doing it with clear understanding that as long as the mind is, there is no liberation. Very important. You know, most of the seekers get enchanted by the Siddha, the Siddhis. And they are extremely wonderful. Somebody is having a stomach ache, beta, kuchunai, and stomach is gone. Hey, this is very, very good. But that is only like you have a lot of money in your pocket and you give somebody a charity. But that is not the solution. See? And therefore, we have to go beyond that. Siddhis come as a result of control over matter. But the one who has attained control over matter, his identity has to be correctly established. Otherwise, again, then we go to the Bhinna Lokas. We have gone to Brahma Lok, then Indra Lok, and there so many things happened. And then we went from there, and then we came back. This is all only at the level of the Upadhi, the matter alone. 
That is why Bhagavan says, Maam upetya tu kaunteya. Punarajan maravitya te. If you go to the abode of your, uh, uh, what do you call, Krishna Devata, you all have heard a lot. Do you know who are, who were all the gopis and gop and nanda and yashoda? They were the various gods who have taken avatar because Narayana has decided to take avatar as Krishna. So they were told, see he is going, go there as a company. No, they have no choice. When you are appointed by somebody, you can't say that I don't want to go. No, that is your duty. You are sent on transfer. One month or six months aboard earth. And when Bhagavan Krishna completed his Leela event, then all these fellows went back. Where is the freedom? In Rama Avatar, all the gods were constantly cursing. So Bhagavan said, okay, I am going to go as Rama. But what will you do? If I am going as a Nara, and you are my subordinate, you cannot become my boss. Therefore, you should become Vanara. Then all the gods, Vishanga Chakra Gada Padma, there they become all the monkeys and the drama goes on. Therefore, friends, the ultimate in our life is this. Focus attention on what we are. All the other things are necessary. As a result, we will discover tremendous energy, power, potentiality. But let us not get caught up into that. Once we get caught up into that, our individuality, Jiva Bhava is maintained. And as long as there is a Jiva Bhava, there is Papa Punya, there is Hell Heaven, there is Punar Janma, again and again continues. See? If a criminal was uh, caught, the police is all around, like a Hindi cinema, they announce. Gabbar Singh, you are surrounded by the police force. Don't try to be smart, okay? And then there is boom. And everything quiet. Now, after half an hour, one hour, nobody comes out. Then the police holding their pant. Because, you know, their pant doesn't remain here. Because the Madhya Pradesh has come out big way. So, they go and then with great difficulty, they open that door. And when they open the door, they see that Gabbar Singh has killed him then. Now, what case will you run on him? So, what will be written on the file? The criminal deceased, case closed. When the ego, who was doing sin or merit, who was thinking himself to be superior or inferior, when the ego disappears, who will go to hell and who will go to heaven? Therefore, the more we are deep in this understanding, we will neither get enchanted by the various powers, nor will you get enchanted or frightened by going to heaven or the hell. That is why, Yaha prayati tajandeham sayati paramangati. That is the paramgati. That is the absolute abode. And therefore, friends, this technique, what is a splendid yoga shastra technique, has to be practiced with a guarded vigilance. That we don't get caught up only in this. That this is what happens with most of the yogis. They are sincere, they are dedicated, they are having tremendous dispassion about the whole world. But when those yogi powers start manifesting in them, they cannot resist. And you know, the intoxication of power is more than the intoxication of wealth. When I know that 
if i am the chief of even a small gram panchayat see earlier that uh, tukaram bahu the moment he become the member of the gram panchayat bahu disappears tukaram maharaj aha uh -huh. tukaram sahib when somebody is added the suffix sahib he is having the power because we were under the rule of the british so much that sahib is associated with the strength of power name sahib all sahib 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 this is how once you get intoxicated by the power nothing can stop us we get totally corrupted that is why friends it is very very easy to grow on this path of yoga but we have to be extremely careful that we don't get derailed otherwise the very purpose is defeated so yaha prayati tajandeham sayati paramam gati now such a big uh, spiritual practice prayana kale manasa atalena bhaktya yukto yoga valena chaiva bhrur madhye pranam avicha samyak satam param purusha upaiti divyam it is very very difficult sir then do we have any reservation for we grahastas for we grahastas who are fit for nothing but want everything please remove this wrong notion because we are grahastha it is not a qualification that we should get a back door entry and realization no our country has become so wretched and dull witted that more the uh, loans we can bring from the outside country more successful is the government see when the philosophy of beggary determines your prosperity nobody can help us and therefore here the teacher says the second option 14 verse ananya cheta satatam yo mam smarati nitya shah tasya ham sulabha parta nitya yuktasya yoginah ananya cheta now here the devotees should be very careful we are taken care of the yogis up to this point according to bhagwan krishna now the devotees normally devotees are all the time glorifying keeping the god away from them bhagwan says ananya cheta ananya cheta means he who has dissolved the sins of otherness from the lord see yesterday i gave the example of ramkrishna paramahamsa space appears to be colored only because we are pushing the space away in the same manner the lord appears to be the creator and the compassionate and the punisher and vishasma dwatapavate vishode ti surya vishasma agnishchendrascha mrityu dhavati panchame iti he is so powerful and then all the time afraid of the god oh god please forgive me you know i never wanted to cheat that you know but you know in this world you know, without that nothing happens is it not you have also cheated everybody is it and in this manner we keep on having a dialogue with the god and keeping him away from ourselves and this is where the biggest obstacle difficulty the wrong turn we take in our life therefore the teacher says ananya cheta ananya anya means other ananya means not other means cheta means the mind the one who has understanding in which there is no sense of otherness valid now see what will happen when my hand comes and lands on my hand, on my own cheek so what is my experience the hand is not something else it is me alone 
when my own uh, tongue is beaten by the teeth, will the tongue go to the dentist and say, Hata inko? No. Why? Because there is no sense of otherness. Ananya cheta therefore means that experience where the sense of otherness has disappeared to such an extent that neither there is an appreciation nor there is condemnation. In Bhagavad Mahapuran, 11th canto, which is the limit, the height of the spiritual knowledge delivered by the Lord to Uddhava just before leaving his abode, leaving for his abode. In the 28th chapter, he begins with this thought. If you are a real spiritual seeker, two things you will drop once for all. One, never praise anybody. Second, never condemn anybody. The more we condemn or praise, we establish and authenticate the sense of otherness as a real. Think, when something goes in between the teeth and the tongue struggle, and finally it comes out. That time, do the teeth say, hey, tangi, tangi so kaddaadi. No. And when the same tongue is bitten by the teeth, the tongue doesn't complain unless they are somebody else's teeth. <laughs> Therefore, friend, it is so simple. Ananya Cheta, the one who has discarded the sense of otherness. Now, when you start discarding the sense of otherness as the foundation of your spiritual practice, you know what will happen? You will not isolate yourself in any group. See? All the isolation will disappear. And see, one step further. This... Uh, Topic I have spoken in Delhi. Be fit to be fit everywhere. When the ice and the water that we see, a part of the water isolates itself from the total water. That isolated water from the total water is called as ice. Therefore, isolated. I see. Second thing. When this water is isolated in the form of the, uh, what you call the ice, icebergs, there is no life possible in the iceberg. Life is possible in the water. See? In the same manner. When we are isolating ourselves by the sense of otherness. We are already living death and no more living life. Because what is death? A constant fear. Somebody will take something from me because he is other, she is other. And this is how we suffer only because of this basic mistake. And the mistake is the sense of otherness. And when the sense of otherness starts dissolving step by step, step by step, ananya cheta. And this is to be practiced how? Satatam. Satatam, it is not only during the lecture. After going home, even with the husband or the mother-in-law. It has to be satatam. Tatam means, tata is a root from which the tantu, the thread word is born. So when we have the veena, in that veena the thread is continuous. Satatam. So it is a continuous process. And how do we achieve this? The technique given is Yoma Smarati Nityashaha. So two things, continuous and every day. It is not only on Ekadashi I observe, you know, fast. On other days I take the revenge. 
No. Our spiritual practice has to be a 24 hour business throughout our life. That is why, you know, many people feel disgusted. They say it is very difficult in your Hinduism, you know. Every day there is something or the other. It's good only one day, one God, one direction, and thereafter, ahahu. Spiritual practice is not a part time profession. It is a full time preoccupation. Then only we are leading a really scientifically meaningful life. Can we say that when I am in the laboratory, then I am a scientist? And when I come, I don't know what happened. I forget all the science. And I just feel like jumping out of the window. I don't know what happens to me. We also don't know why don't you jump. <laughs> jump and the problem will be solved. So when we have discovered some scientific in the investi uh, investigations or discoveries, that is with us all the time. It is not only in the laboratory. Therefore, Ananya Deta Satatam Yomam Swarati Nityashaha Bhagavan is telling, then I am in your heart, my dear. Why don't you focus attention to me? That is why Bhagavan Narayana has got Shankha Chakra Gada Padma. First he is the cordless mobile Shankha. I don't know how come none of these mobile phone companies that use this word. Shankha mobile. There will be maximum sale in India. Then Gada Misai. If they have got the Garud and Maruti, they should use this word. Instead of using the mouth, they should say Garud computers. So Yo Maam Swarati Nitishaha is constantly suggesting from within. That is why we are told listen to the voice of conscience. Conscience is in tune with the consciousness. When our mind is in tune with the consciousness, that time whatever evaluation our mind gives, that evaluation is called as conscience. So, Ananya Teta Satatam Yomam Smaratinityasaha. Now, what will happen? Suppose we do that. Are Maharaj, Sasya Ham Sunabhav Partha. Yeah, Arjun, for him I am extremely easily available. Don't use this word Sunabha for any other thing. Isn't it? For introducing the cleanliness everywhere, Sunabha, Sunabha, Sunabha. And there are people who name the child as Sunabha. Narayan. Tasyaham Sulabha Partha Nitya Yuktasya Yoginaha. So he who is thus ever united with this understanding with me, for him I am extremely easily available. You know what is the beauty in this? You don't have to change the place. Purute Ganga Sagar Gamanam Brata Paripalana Matavadanam. One. Then you don't have to search for anything or anybody outside. Swamiji these days has started thinking to have a guru. Could you suggest me a few places so that I can go for shopping? Guru shopping. Don't search guru outside. Outside gurus are Mahagurus. See? Our Shirdi Sai Baba's Bodhi, if you are reading, there he describes who is the Sadhguru. Sadhguru is the one to whom nothing can be given. What will you give to him? This only few dollars or rupees here and there. And that which was told to us by him that this is nothing but an illusion. So by giving illusion to the substratum, what are we giving? It is something like giving the snake to the rope. Say, we give you a snake. Where from the snake has come? Giving our body. We know the body is the most wretched thing in the world. 
ಅತ್ಯಂತ ಮಲಿನೋ ದೇಹ ಗುರು ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ವಾಟ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ದಟ್ ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಗಿವ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಗುರು ವರ್ಕ್ ದ ಡೇಮ್ ವಿಲ್ ನೆವರ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಮಾಂಡ್ ಎನಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ and there is only one thing that we should give not we can give problem is we can't give we should give he is our individuality he is the great master in our bombay nitarnadatta maharaj he read his life so beautifully he say he said what sadhana i have done is only what i have accepted the words of my guru that i am sachidananda par brahma parmatma that's it now when we are not ready to listen to the guru suppose the guru says that don't come here go there but why not others are coming you know every word the teacher is putting us to a test that we don't understand we are testing the guru all the time with that danda in that tang 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 ke 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 reading guru is not testing us he is every moment and through that only the disciple he is worth he then alone grows therefore friends a real thing that can be given to the teacher on guru purnima is is all your individuality and hold on to that which is indicated by him then the guru purna mind that is created otherwise every year it comes and goes and so many guru purnima they have got but i am apurna apurna if guru purnima we cannot become fooled no body can help so tasya ham sulabha partha nitya yukta sa yogina it is so simple no place to run out no time to wait for i don't know when guru will come in my life guru has come and shaken you right from childhood but where are we to understand guru because we have got already a picture of guru in our head in our mind and with that framed mind we go you know in marriages they in the friends to the groom and the bride i thought why not give friends and then you have to cut the picture according to the frame it is not that the frame is fixed according to the picture in the same manner we have the frame of mind and with that frame of mind we go for guru talking dadi change tik mar just ma achane tik mar and then the guru is born according to our choice but you know they talk english in go old uh, olden days in the gurukul system it was not there one person asked me i said you know during your time it may not be there no no sir not my time in the vedic period i said on what basis you tell that they were not talking in english you were you there no then they were talking in english but why it is not reported because you don't understand all funny funny notions no waiting for the time no searching for a person no running about from one place to another sulabha is available in your own heart and the real guru who really helps us he is not a structure outside but the guru who is installed on the throne of our heart with and worship every day with the flowers of respect and reverence when we very attentive when we have become aware now i am talking from devotion point of view when i become aware that the lord is seated in my heart before the thought is known to me it is first known to the lord before a word is uttered by me it is first recorded by the lord when we become aware of this can a dirty thought ever erupt in our mind think why the mess comes only because we have not become aware of the divine presence in our own bosom 
and the more we become aware that awareness itself is the reality. So first, to become aware is a verb. And when the process of being aware goes so intensely that the verb becomes the noun. Spiritual practice is conversion of the verb into noun. See, becoming is a verb. I want to become rich. I want to go to America and do what they have done. I want to do this. I want to become that. So we have become so much. And because of that so much of becoming, we are under the load of all that what we have become. And then slowly, slowly, when the spiritual process begins, where, where do we end? All becoming is dropped. Now, neither I am a man nor a woman, neither husband nor wife nor young nor old, neither Hindu nor Muslim, neither Krishna Bhakta nor Rama Bhakta. Everything, all that I have become is dropped. When all the verbs are dropped, what remains is being. Being is a noun. Becoming is a verb. Therefore, it is as simple, sulabha. Swami Akhandaji Maharaj will give you one very good example. How simple and easy it is to realize the truth is to give this example. How much effort and time is required for a wife to become a woman? See? Wife has to be a woman. I am talking under intense conditions. So, there is nothing that is required to be done, only recognize, realize, be aware. And that is why Bhagavan says, Atyanta Surapa, extremely simple. But we make our spiritual practice so complicated, in that complication we forget the Lord. And then we start searching everywhere. And he is sitting inside. You know, these topics are brought out in the Puranas in beautiful stories. When Vishnu Bhagavan was being chased by one of the deity who was blessed by him. Now he wanted to kill Vishnu so that he can hold on to Lakshmi. And then Vishnu is running and the Rakshasa is running after him. And then after running he gets tired and then Vishnu thinks, you know, the best way is I should enter his heart. He will see everywhere except his heart. And this is how the Lord entered the heart of the Asuras. Asura means who? He who gives a right clap at the wrong time. Sura Rahita Asura. Those who have no rhythm of living, they are leading a life of mechanical existence. The music of life is totally gone. Therefore, friends, Atyanta Surabha Partha, I am extremely easily available the moment Ananya Cheta. Now, Yisrael, see, if you read one of my books, this Choti Choti Bate, on the back side, it is written on the back cover. Instead of struggling to have the vision of God, let Him express through us. This is the highest in the spiritual life. Krishna, 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 when will you give me darshan? Okay, I give. What will you do? Next. No, 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 no. I know my marriage never. You want to copy it with me or what? Krishna will say. Therefore, don't have that funny kind of notion. He is very much available in our heart and let him express through us. Through action, through word, through thoughts, through every expression. Now, when this Lord starts expressing through us, Mamupetya Punarajanma Dukkhalayam Ashashvatam 
According to Bhagavan Sri Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, this word is used number of times. Sam Siddhim Paramam Gataha. The Supreme Siddhi. What is the Supreme Siddhi? Bhagavan Ram Krishna Paramahams was once approached by a Hatha Yogi and he crossed the Ganges walking on the water and came and stood before him. I am so and so and I have walked over the water to come and meet you. And that great master, most unassuming, he said, how many years you have taken to learn this great Siddhi? I have done Tapasya for 25 years. And in 25 years, what you have achieved? Saving 25 Naya Paisa. Pay to that boat wala and he will take you from this side to that side. Why you require a Siddhi for that? Think. That is why I told you, this is so enchanting. When we are able to be something different from the people, that is Siddhi. And those Siddhi is when they are making us different from the people. We are not merging in the people. It is like becoming an iceberg. Becoming an iceberg is not spiritual practice. Swami Kandayan used to say, giving up all specialities and becoming commoner than the commonest is the real spiritual growth. Therefore, he says, Mamu Petya Punar Janma Naptu Vanti Mahatmanaha. Mahatmanaha, there are two Atmas. One is CH Atma. CH means Chota. This Chota Atma is all the time, I am this, I am that. I have not been seen. You must have seen this modern expression. The first thing, hey, I am Lalitha. Lalitha, not Ta. My Kavitha, Abhi nahi hu. So, I, 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 and such a small individuality. I have got this thing, I have done this thing, this is my room. No elders are allowed to enter my room without my permission. Right from day one, the strong individuality is sown, manured, nurtured, and when they become the big, nothing but only I, I, I. See? And as a result, we lead a isolated life of solitude and frustration. Even if somebody takes a screwdriver and puts in our arm feet, we won't laugh. Because there's so much of tension, so much of frustration, all the time bitterness. That is why Mahatma Anaha, he who has dissolved his individuality, the ice is no more the ice. It has become one with the water. The moment the ice melts into the water, you cannot separate it out. In the same manner, Mahatmanaha, the one who has discarded his individuality from any conditioning, he alone has the freedom to be with any place, anybody, on any front without getting caught up in anything. See, Mahatmanaha. Now what happens to them? Sit, paramam Siddhim Sam Siddhim Gataha. What is the supreme achievement, supreme Siddhi? Only one. And the supreme Siddhi is immaculately pure heart. No likes, no dislikes, more than that, no hatred for anything or anybody in the whole creation. In the Kashmiri Shaivaism, in the Shiva Samhita, there they mention in one verse where they say, there are eight ties. Because of the eight ties, the Shiva is reduced to Jiva. When these eight ties are cut asunder, the jiva regains his jiva status. And among those eight, the first one is gruna, hatred. See? 
when we are unable to tolerate the world, we want to change everything according to our choice. <coughs> and when we are able to change the world according to our choice, then we start thinking, I am serving the society. Serving the society means what? I am serving the society with my plans. See? What will be my service to a drunkard? Relieve him from the drinking habit. Isn't it? So what will be my service to a smoker? Relieve him from his habit of smoking. Isn't it? What will be my service to the uh, slum dwellers? Take them out of the slum and construct a house and give them. But you ask them, Hey drunkard, what is the best way to serve you? Are yaar, give me one power. That's it. See? You ask a smoker, what is the way best best I can serve you? We have five, five, five. Oh, you are a spiritual seeker? What spiritual seeker? No, because you said five, five, five. What has to do with the five, five, five and the spiritual seeker? No, these are the number of Brahma Sutras in Shari Ravash. Oh, for me, five, five, five is only one brand. Isn't it? So, our understanding of serving the world is imposing our views on others. Please understand. And that is what brings us into shackles, into bondage. Therefore, the day we have understood this, the purity of the mind or the attainment of the perfection in our life is that mind which has zero obsessions about anything in this world. When this is said in English, we have said, he oh, is so nice, he is so nice. But the same Santa Mahatma they have said, He vile yalante taise chirahave, chitti yasudhyave samadhana. Tukara Maharaj, all the you know, old fellows, old timers, they didn't know. Today, you know, the IT world is very difficult to understand. It is the same problem every time. Therefore, Paramam Samsidhim Gataha Mahatmanaha. And such people, Mam Upetya, having merk in me, having merk in me, Pudara Janmam Dukharaya Prakashvatam Na Apnu Vandi. They are no more born. Now please understand the meaning of birth and death. Only one meaning we understand birth and death is when the body dies, death. When the body is born, birth. But that is incomplete understanding. We are born and dying every moment. In this hall, you are all born as the listeners. In this hall, I am born as the speaker. Then we go out from here. Then we are born in the shoe rack as the fighters. And then when we go out, then the watchman tells us, it's a better. And then we are again born as insulted. See how many times we are born, every moment we are born. And the new birth demands the earlier death. See? Therefore, Punara Janma Navidyate means you will never be influenced by the changes in the world around you. The clarity, the poise, the beauty of your being cannot be corrupted by the weak world if you are strong. Or if we are weaklings, you know, like my Madhya Pradesh, stomach is extremely weak. So, little bit of things go here and there, immediately it is affected. 
So it is not that the uh, poisons or the infections are too much. Because all other people are taking the same water, nothing happens to them. I have become weak and therefore the germs become powerful. In the same manner, when we are weaklings, fragile, then the world is full of miseries. Swamiji, why God created this world? You ask the God, don't ask me. I did not create the world. But then why do you scold me? This is the only thing I can do. See? All kinds of funny questions come only from the weak mind. When you are grown really within, then you come to know. Ananya Cheta Satatam Yoma Smarthi Nityashaha He who has discovered and become aware of the divine presence in his heart, he will never live a fearful life of a beggar in this world. He will live like a monarch, like a king, in the freedom of all the shackles and move in this world without expectation from anybody. So, Napnuvanti Mahatmanaha Samsiddhim Paramagata. Now the question is, those various things which come in the scriptures, that you go to Brahma Lok, and then you go to Surya Lok, and you go to Indra Lok, and they say in Indra Lok there is very good Urvashi, and there is one Urvashi Nagar also. So will I be able to read Urvashi there? I name it Deko. So, all these descriptions that come, we go to this world, that world. From here onwards, the teacher takes up a theme, which I'll explain tomorrow. A Brahma Bhuvanan Loka Punaravarti Nodina Mamu Petya Pontu Kaunteya Punarajanmana Vidyate. Whether you are in Satara or Pune or Mumbai or you are in the abode of the achievement for the Indians, America. Everywhere, it is the same nagging wife and the stupid husband. There is no change. Where will you run? Therefore, everywhere is the same story. Unless you go within and discover yourself. Now, what are those various abodes which are spoken of and how we go to the returnable uh, you know, things? You may smuggle, but then they will deport you. All those different kinds of relative existence and gati is said as a concluding topic of this chapter, which we will conclude tomorrow. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamevavashishate Om Shanti